what would 90s kid make of this podcast? This podcast was awesome, man! Hello, and welcome to Attack of the Awesome Interviews. I'm your host, Mike, and along with me is my fellow co-host, Susie. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me back on board. <laughs> As usual. And for this interview of ours, we got a uh, special co-host to help us with the questions. He is uh, known on the forums as the Long Wannabe. He reviews uh, grudge music. Uh, his name is Jared. Hi. Very happy to be here. I am excited and ecstatic and all those wonderful things about actually being on the drug. <laughs> happy to have you, mate. All right. You guys ready? Thank you, Susie. You're welcome. Yes, yes. Are, are we ready for our guest that we're about to interview? Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are listening, you noticed by the title of the video that the podcast is going to be under is that this guest is a comic book reviewer. And the only comic book reviewer that I know on that guy with the glasses is Linkara. Woo! Yeah. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> I was told my trailer would have mineral water in it. It is not there. <laughs> hey, I, oh, sorry yeah, about yeah. that. We gotta yeah. fire that makeup lady or whatever lady it is, whatever job she does. We gotta All fire right. her. Mom, fired. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I am here. I am awesome, and so is this podcast. <laughs> yeah, you are awesome, good sir. For you are Linkara. Do, 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 do. Oh, shucks. To start off this interview, we'll, we're going to have our segment known as Ask That Character. And the first character we have loved to ask questions to is 90s Kid. Okay, just a moment. Let me go get him. Oops. Dude! What's going on Dude! here? Dude! Dude! Ready for some questions? Whoa, questions rocking, give to me! The first question is, what's the most awesome comic you ever read? Anything by Rob Liefeld, man. It just gets so awesome, and the heroes are so big, and so are the guns, and it's always like... <laughs> so awesome, man. If you don't read those, then there is something wrong with you. <laughs> Rock on, dude. Righteous. Rock. Now, I want to be a 90s kid, too. How do I travel back in time to get there? Whoa, you just totally blew my mind with that question. <laughs> okay, what you got to do is you got to start moving really fast. I mean, so fast that like you're, like, running on water, and then you're, like, running on the moon. And then you will have gone so fast that you have traveled through time. Awesome. So don't end up in the 80s. That decade sucked. No, no, no. We don't want to go there. No. no. <laughs> My mind is psyched right now, but... Totally. You know, how would you fight the Kurgan? Oh, yes, the Kurgan. I would fight him with guns, man! It doesn't matter if they, like, cut off his head. You don't even have to cut off his head. It's all you have to do is just, like, shoot it enough times. It just gets blown up! <laughs> Rock on, dude. <laughs> Rock on. Now, your favorite film from the 90s. What is it? so many good ones. It's hard to pick one exactly. I want to say like Die Hard because of all the explosions! But yeah. on the other hand, there is also other movies that feature lots of explosions. Also Bill and Ted. Excellent! Yeah, Excellent! John is, John is <laughs> film. Now, how would you kill Barney and please give a detailed description? Oh, dude, it always comes back to guns. I keep telling you this. All you have to do is, like, put duct tape around, like, five guns at once and then link them all to a single trigger, 
and then you just like shoot all over the place. Yes, there might be some collateral damage, but in the end, it's all for the best. <laughs> Are you ever stalked by Jason Voorhees? As a matter of fact, I was once. That was kind of weird. But then it turns out that apparently he doesn't like water. Even though sometimes he comes crawling out of the water. It's weird. Continuity. Blows my mind. Uh, what's your opinion on Sailor Moon? Dude, those chicks are hot. <laughs> I don't really I, watch it though. That's for girlies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now this shall be interesting since you hate the '80s. But have you ever met '80s Dan? And would you ever consider doing a crossover video with him? As a matter of fact, I have met '80s Dan once. He was an okay dude, despite the '80s sucking. But I gave him a, um, a can of new Coke. What? The new Coke was awesome! It was like old Coke, but new! Yeah! <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> awesome indeed. <laughs> What's the most excellent thing you like about the 90s, dude? Dude, it always comes back to everything just being more extreme! I mean, everything <laughs> yeah. was just bigger and brighter and more exciting! <laughs> And, you know, we didn't take any crap from any of those wimpy older kinds of superheroes. Everything was more muscle-bound and hardcore. Sometimes, sometimes they even, like, traded out their old costumes for, like, ones with pouches. Because pouches can hold stuff for you. They're like pockets, but bigger. Okay. Now, uh, what do you think of the Wetworks comic? Uh, the only reason this person asks it is he distinctly remembers his Navy boot camp class flag being a copy of the cover of Wetworks 1. As it happens, I have not read Wetworks number 1, and I don't think Linkara has either. Oh, dude. God. I know, it is disappointing, but sometimes there's only enough 90s kid to go around to read things. Well, I, su I, I suppose that. that's valid. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, like, so four vampires show up, right? And except they aren't vampires. They're like Eric Liefeld vampires, you know? With San Satan, <laughs> like, devil powers and stuff. <laughs> so powers. So they, like, show up and you have to fight them. So assuming that you... That you're you and not a super badass hero, what'd you do? To fight off, you know, huge vampires who are, who are like four of them coming at me? But they're not vampires. But they're not vampires. But they have uh, satanic powers and stuff. Dude, satanic powers are awesome! <laughs> I would probably like try to befriend them first to show me their awesome dark ways. But if they were, like, assholes, then I would, like, grab something sharp and stab them! Because even if they aren't really vampires, I think stabbing them in the heart would, like, hurt them. Just a bit. Right on, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> now, I had to make sure I got this question, because as a grunge reviewer, this is, like, the opium of my success right here, to ask the 90s kid. Nirvana or Pearl Jam? <gasps> Oh, dude, they both have their own unique things about them that make them awesome, but I think Nirvana is just a little more hardcore. Oh, yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> dude, will anything ever be cooler than the 3DO? Oh, man. I love the 3DO. It's got, like, full motion video scenes. Says, and there's only one controller on it, because really, you're only going to play with yourself anyway. And, well, that came out wrong. But anyway, yeah, the 3DO is so awesome. It makes like a Genesis and a Nintendo, which already is a Nintendo. This like, looks like baby's toys. And what I love about it, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the Sega Genesis, but the 3DO is just so much bigger and better. 
It's got like a CD unit inside of it. CDs are the future. Mark my words. As are the full motion video sequences. Because, you know, you'll never get higher quality video than that stuff. But you know what? They incorporate it into the game, and you, like, sometimes have to shoot real people, or you have to maneuver around in, like, a big haunted house with guys who look like the Ninja Style Dancer but beefier, and I'm just kind of rambling now. <laughs> 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 Nothing wrong with that, dude. Excellent. The epic ramble I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> awesome. Dude. Dude. What's the most extreme nerf weapon? A long time ago, I recall this one nerf weapon that had, like, this huge belt-fed thing. It just, like, went for, like, halfway across the room. It was just awesome, man. And it just, like, kept turning a crank, and it just kept shooting and shooting and shooting. Mind you, it's not fun to refill it, but that's why you buy, like, two, because then you could just, like, feed in another second belt. Exactly. Okay, now, here is an important question. 90s kid. Dude, where's my car? Uh -huh. I don't know. I've been looking everywhere for it. We got kind of wasted last night, and then the car just kind of vanished. No. Uh, I think this question's a little more important. Dude, where's your car? <laughs> Dude, where's my car? I'm a kid. I don't have a car. I mooch off my parents and my friends who do have cars. Excellent. See, this question's even more extreme than the other ones. Dude, what does mine say? What does mine say? Oh, no, dude, it's, I don't even know what that says. I can't see it because, wait a second, I just realized. I'm talking to a computer screen. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> 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 uh, 90s kid, are you really Linkara's trapped in time older brother? What? No! No, 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 yes. Wow. We don't like wow. to talk about it. No. Well, I think you might have to, considering the next question is, when did you and Linkara meet? Well, despite being time trapped and all, I first met him, like, a long time ago, when he was trying to review Blue Beetle, which is not hardcore, by the way. And he just wanted to, like, showcase about how the 90s weren't all that great, but, of course, he got me instead, because the 90s are awesome, and he's wrong about them! <laughs> so many good things came out of the 90s, like Rob Liefeld. Mind you, they were crappy stuff, like James Robinson's Starman and Sand and Neil Gaiman's Sandman, those series were not hardcore. They kind of sucked, in fact. But you got stuff like Image Comics. You got Jim Lee doing X-Men. And then you had all the various heroes who, like, were more realistic and gritty. <laughs> we like gritty. Yes, indeed. <laughs> what's your... What's your absolute yes. favorite? <laughs> All right. What's your absolute like favorite reading. song from the nineties? <laughs> Smells like Teen Spirit, my friend. Smells like Teen Spirit. Yes. Righteous. Goes on like that. Right. Yeah. Now, who would you say are your inspirations in life? Rob Liefeld is the end-all, be-all of everything. <laughs> you once did a commercial about pants, you know. Really? Really? Yes. Awesome. Wow. If you have any VHS tapes from that era, you might be able to find it. Wow. Or if somehow in the future they invent some kind of weird internet kind of thing where you could host videos, shit like that'll ever happen. <laughs> you can probably look it up, like Levi's. Chaw. Chaw. <laughs>
So how long have you been drawing comic books? Since I was about seven years old, little kid. What did your parents think about it? They hated it. They hated it. Oh, yeah. After I, I got a job and they saw that you can make a living out of third day, you'll hear no complaints anymore. And you created X-Force? Mm -hmm. So what is the drawing of? This is the Spike Man. And what's this right here? This is the camera on top of your head that will record the wrongdoings of others. So Rob, have you had any formal art training? No. Just uh, a lot of imagination, I think. Wait till so I say it and then look down. Or just open it and say it. Fly button. <laughs> now, aren't you from the same universe where characters like Bart Simpson never age? Quite possibly. I don't meet a lot of people. I don't meet as many people as you think I would. I actually spend most of my time, like, hiding out in the car's closet. That's okay, because it gives me plenty of time to read my comics. Which are awesome. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> I just kind of come out pre mention something that I need to reflect upon and mention how awesome it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, well, thanks for asking our questions, 90s kid. Or even answering no them. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. Rock on, 90s kid. Rock on, 90s kid. Rock on. We love you. Oh, God. That guy. I, I, he still crashes here, even though I keep telling him not to. <laughs> Does he at least pay your rent? <laughs> Ah, uh, well. Yeah, if he, did, if he had a job, he wouldn't be the 90s kid. Well. Wow. <laughs> he steals money for me to go out and buy old comics. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next character that we love to ask questions to is Harvey Fine Voice. All right, I'll be right back and get him. All right. I hope he's not too... What is this crap? What do you want from me? Look, just this Harvey, just go sit down and talk to them. And fine. Hi, guys and dolls, what's up? This is Harvey Fine Voice. Hey, are you ready to us for ask you some questions? Yeah, I'm ready. Aren't you ready? <laughs> I'm totally ready. Yeah, get on with it. <laughs> ask the questions already. My time is money. Come on, come on. <laughs> Have you been abducted by aliens? No, but apparently there's an alien version of me running around, which is kind of odd, considering you'd think with pipes like mine, I'd be totally unique. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, love to meet him, though. I'd love to have, like, a duet kind of deal with him. Awesome. Uh, did Son of the Mask scar you for life? Say again? Did Son of the Mask scar you for life? I don't think I ever saw that, that picture. No. Consider yourself lucky. Exactly. <laughs> I don't have a lot of time to watch the, watch the film stars anymore anyway. I mean, I got gigs lined up from here to Pasadena. You're a busy fellow. I try to be, which is why it's kind of annoying when Linkara drags me in to talk to strangers. <laughs> <laughs> we try not to take up too much of your time, sir. That's yeah, so fine. Back, You're good kids. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put my fine voice on. All right, who would I win in a kid. fight? I like that kid like the Dickens, but man, he can get kind of annoying. Plus, it's kind of loud. <laughs> <laughs> who would win in a fight? Godzilla, Neutro, or the MMPR Megazord? Keep in mind, Godzilla is indestructible. This is a weird-ass question for me. <laughs> Just a tad. <laughs> but but if, if I had to pick, it would probably be Godzilla because, well, that's the only picture of the ones you listed I've actually seen. Exactly. Mind you, that kid showed me that Neutro guy once in a while. I don't think he has a brain. Has to go visit the wizard for that. Yeah. <laughs> are, you in the, are you in the mafia? We don't talk about it. I don't know. No, I don't know no mafia. Who are you? Who are you? Who is this guy? What's he talking about? The mob? I just, Maybe I should be the mob sometime. Is that okay with you? Fine with me. I don't really care. Is this, is this a question you just ask people? Are you in the mob? Jeez. 
You don't, you don't talk about that kind yeah. of thing. Do you want to get shot? <laughs> anyway, <guess> not. <laughs> I've got a better question for you, Harvey, if you'll be so kind as to answer it. Sound like a sweet kid. Go, go on with your question. Thank you. Uh, who's got a better voice, you or the cinema snob? It's hard to say exactly. He just sounds kind of gravelly, but there is kind of a quality to his voice that I do enjoy. Just kind of sit there transfixed for a while. Just kind of lose yourself. Yeah. So I got a better singing voice, I got to say. Oh, God, yes. You know, there's another guy that's got a great voice, that Dr. Ashens guy. Oh, my God, I could listen to that all day. Awesome. It really does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now, do you like this era, or do you like the 40s better? I tend to like the 50s better, to be perfectly honest. There's just a kind of energy to it. Right, out, right after the war, we beat the Nazis. Good times. Mm -hmm. But this era has its own qualities to it. For example, it's got Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh-huh. Have any ladies thrown anything on stage while you were performing? It gets kind of weird with some of the stuff they throw. Occasionally they'll throw their bras. Broom mm -hmm. keys are the best ones, though. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Weirdest thing I think someone threw. Someone threw joke teeth at the uh, at the <laughs> stage once. Did they come in handy? It was just like there was lots of roses, there were a couple of panties, and then suddenly, bam, joke teeth. You know, the chattering kind? Did you ever use them? I kind of looked yeah. down at that, and I, and, I, and I guess I was singing uh, uh, April Moon. Yep, going through. I, I, I still continued on, but I was just like, there was a second where I almost broke my concentration because I was just like trying to think, who throws joke teeth? I, I don't get it. <laughs> Someone who needs a better sense of humor, I would assume. Exactly. And uh, then, Mr. Fine Voice, are you really an alien, or was that just Silent Hill talking? I was kind of confused since no Earthling could have pipes that awesome. I know it's unbelievable, but it's just the way it is. Now, mind you, like I said, there's this alien version of me just running around everywhere. Yeah. I'm st like I said, I want to meet this guy, because I think we could pull something off. I mean, just, just imagine if just you, me, alien me, singing, I've got you under my skin. Kind of gotta going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Maybe night and day. Night and day could work. Yeah. Hmm. I could. Wow. Now, Mr. Fine Voice, how low-pitched can you go? I can go pretty low pitch if you want it to. It's kind of hard and it doesn't sound as good. That very white guy can pull off the low voice like that. I am not quite as skilled in that area. Right here you got my good singing voice. Right about here. Mm -hmm. Just the way you look tonight. <sighs> that was my Valentine's. <laughs> Oh, alrighty then. <laughs> Why do you chew cigarettes instead of smoking them? Are you trying to quit? I don't like to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, do you, do you smoke? Maybe you're not doing it right. <laughs> I don't, maybe I don't know. There you go. It's a good point. Yes. I do. I, get, I, I sometimes hold the cigarette the wrong way. But you know what? I'm busy. I got a lot on my mind. It's hard to concentrate. Mind you, when my hand starts getting on fire, it gets kind of annoying. But you know how it is. You just get distracted. Exactly. Shit happens. Mm. What can you do? Yeah. And, uh, I got a body mouth in this one. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, last question for you, Harvey. I myself am a singer. Would you be up for a sing-off sometime? At some point, potentially, yes. It all depends on where I meet you and when. I'll let you know. <laughs> Catch up with you somewhere in time. Swing, baby. <laughs> all right. That's all the questions we got for you, Harvey. 
Okay, I'll see you later. Bob Goulet tells me he's actually created a better rendition of everybody's working for the weekends. I'm going to go talk to him about that. Peace out. Take care. Goodbye. Ah, <laughs> oh, Harvey, he's a good guy. All right. Uh, yeah, he is. He's really nice. <clears throat> for the most part. <laughs> he is. He's brilliant. All right, our next character that we'd love to ask questions to is um, Luster B. Bum. Okay, that one. I have to go out into the street to get him. <laughs> Do what you can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hello! Hello! Hey, Lester! <laughs> Who are you, tiny computer person? <laughs> 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 oh, let's <Hello>. do <laughs> I think I lost connection. <laughs> hey, Lester, we've you got, got to me. ask you questions. <laughs> we got well, some questions for you, Ch- Lester. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I better take a hole. I don't have one of those. No. <laughs> I'll quickly jump aboard with the question before we all die of laughter. Um, I have accidentally made several different show names depending on what I review. I think I should just come up with a universal show name for all my videos like Spoonie and an experiment. There. So my question is, names? You got names? Oh, come on, help a guy out, will ya? Names? Ooh, okay, I have names. I have Fred. <laughs> I have Stanley. <laughs> Stanley's a good name. Oh, and Lester! Lester is the best name, but you can't have that one because it's nice. <laughs> so funny. Righteous. I can't have your name! I have Mike and Jared Susie. Oh my god, I can read! <laughs> Yay! Hooray! Alright, the next question, before we die of laughter, of course, is what's your opinion on Scott Pilgrim? Oh my god, Scott Pilgrim is the greatest comic I've ever read in my life! You wouldn't know it's kind of like a manga, even though it isn't because it wasn't made in China. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, now, did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre make you throw up? Yeah. I forgot the question! <laughs> Did the ch- did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre make you throw up? No, but the popcorn at the theater did. <laughs> what was in it? I hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, Lester. <laughs> I'm looking at a wall. <laughs> Like, I grab his <laughs> <laughs> did you <laughs> did you have fun with Chester A. Bum at DaishoCon last November? Oh, I had so much fun. We went to see Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows Part One. Which wait a second, Part One. Part two. Oh my God, that was only half a movie. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I had to go tell him that. <laughs> and yet, it was still a full movie. Exactly. Just blew my mind there. Can't wait to whack out of that. My mind is easy to blow, along with other parts of me, but I don't like to talk about that either. <laughs> okay, Lester, just change the subject. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, <laughs> Susie, can you... <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, Lester, just one more question for you, dude, and then you can go back to getting change if you want. Okay. Okay. You appear to be more eloquent than your dear friend Chester. What's up with that? I am much more learned than my associate Chester, even though he's East. I went to I went to Harvard. <laughs> okay. I hung out there and asked for change there. They're very nice people at Harvard. They gave me lots of change. And that weird green stuff that they, they keep saying is money, but it's not, because it's not change. No. Very weird. <laughs> that is all luster. But <laughs> <sighs> oh, no. well, that's all the questions we have for you, Lester. Oh, 
okay. I'm going to go bang my head against the wall. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> Bye. My office is going to smell like urine for the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Only one right. left of opportunity. <laughs> for that sentence. <laughs> Not for you. <laughs> we got... One last question for one character, and it's for the ninja-style dancer. I'll see if I can find him. He's been kind of missing for a while. One second, I'll be right back. Okay. Yes. Okay, he's sitting down out the chair. Ninja-style dancer, why are you so silent? Why so serious? Use Morse code to respond. Uh, he doesn't want to seem to reply in Morse code. He's writing something on a little board. A ninja must be soft with his footfalls as with his dancing. <laughs> Unless you are tap dancing. In which case, be noisy. He's sitting a lot on this board. Yeah. Must be a big board. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was the answer. Wow. Okay. Very in depth. Thank you, Ninja Style Dancer. I love that ninja. I know. He is bowing and walking away. And now he's missing. He's faded into the shadows. That's okay. That's, he's... that's it for this segment of Ask That Character. Now we got questions for Linkara. Do, 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 do. Oh. <laughs> Obviously, the best character. Yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> and I am so happy because I am asking the first one to Mr. Linkara. <clears throat> Question number one, Linkara. Have you ever heard the Ramones cover of the Spider-Man theme? Uh, I think I might have. I can't remember exactly, but it sounds... In, in my head, I want to say I have. Okay. Actually, I do have the song on my computer, which I will play in the podcast later. So, so you will listen to it. Cool. <laughs> uh, second question, which these questions are asked by on the forum by the Hardcore Kid. Uh, the second question is, have you ever watched the Teen Titans anime series at all? Yes, I did. I loved it. It was very good. I didn't like it at first because it seemed to be, it, for a show called Teen Titans, it seemed to be more focused towards, you know, little kids. But after a yeah. while, I grew to appreciate it and really like it as its own entity. And uh, some of my favorite episodes are, are the end of the fourth season and end of the fifth season, Titans Together and uh, the Trigon stuff. Just a side note here, there's actually a comic book series based off it. In one issue, there's actually a naked teenager Starfire. <laughs> oh, fun. That, that, that's what you want to have in your book. <laughs> in your book, Men oh, Kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can see the kids flocking to go purchase it. Yeah. Here, you know, kids. for kids. Yeah. Yeah. Nudity aimed at you, apparently. <laughs> Mind you, That's mind you, though, New Teen Titans back in the eighties had had its own fair share of uh, of uh, nudity in it. Not not full frontal, of course, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, cool. Starfire would free, would would frequently walk around naked. Yeah. For kids. <laughs> uh, now, uh, uh, Linkara, I understand you're a big Harlequin fan. Have you ever considered doing a review of mm -hmm. any of the Harlequin comics? Probably not, considering a lot of her stuff is really funny and, and enjoyable, so it has no place on a show about bad comics. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Had to yeah, ask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go, hardcore kid. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what are your thoughts on fans pairing you up with Mars Girl and Iron Liz? Have you ever thought of there maybe being a rivalry between the two characters over you at the third year anniversary? <laughs> no, that isn't going to happen. Pairing me up with Mars Girl, it, it, it spawned off from, from a silly little joke 
from the uh, from a previously on segment and has grown into this thing which does, isn't really there. Because <laughs> we're just good friends, and I'm actually with Liz. So, but people can yeah. feel free to write whatever fan they want. It's a good it's a good healthy way of expressing their fandom without being stalkerish. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, blow up. Now this next question. The hardcore kid asks, "Is uh, I remember in your top comics you never reveal. Uh, you mentioned Christian Weston Chandler's and Sonic Sonic Chu. Now Christian is said to have autism, although I doubt autism is responsible for causing someone to drink his own semen and put sex things on himself on the internet, which he did. I myself happen to have Asperger syndrome, and I personally wanted to know what's your take on autism." I have no take on autism. It's 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 autism. I I don't to be perfectly honest. I don't know enough about it to really give an informed opinion one way or the other about it. Which I don't even know how one can ha- one can have an opinion one way or another about it because it's just autism. Mm-hmm. Uh, though from many people who uh, who commented on that video say there's no way in hell that that freak actually like has autism, and if he does, then it's no excuse for his behavior. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, raising the the bar back up. Yep. Uh, Here's an interesting question. How did you end up cameoing in Diamanda Hagen's Raspberry Reich review? Love that review. Uh, They, I believe they contacted me a while ago to uh, do a cameo, and it took me forever to actually do it, and and I, and I think it was after that that I decided I have to make a policy to not cameo on people who are not on that guy with the glasses. It's not that it's not that I, I think Diamond Hagen is bad. Nothing nothing of the sort. I actually haven't watched any other show. It's just I get so many people asking me for cameos mm-hmm. that are not on the site that I would have to spend like an entire day just working on cameos for other people if I did that, yeah. and I just don't have the time to invest in that. Mm-hmm. No, that would be a big demand. <laughs> Damn, mm-hmm. my curse is off my list. <laughs> I feel bad about it, though, because I do want to do cameos for other people, and I want to be a nice guy, and I want to be helpful to aspiring in critics, or even people who are already established critics. Mm-hmm. But it's just, oh, yeah. there's too many. Yeah. There's too many of you. <laughs> <laughs> we keep spawning. <laughs> yeah. I had a funny comment from a person on YouTube who's like, you're just like the 90s kid. Are you and him going to cameo together? And I'm like, I don't think there's a possibility that we can in the future with how busy Linkara is. <laughs> but it was very flattering for him to suggest that. Exactly. Hmm. <laughs> mind you, mind you, yeah. Ashley, I do, there is, there is one way to cameo with me, and that's to catch me at a convention and just having me quickly film something in 30 seconds, because, you know, I'm going to be walking around most of the time anyway. I've done that for one or two people now. Ah. Who just caught me at MagFest and wanted me to just, like, do something or say something. No to self. Do in the future. <laughs> yes, that, that's a good idea. Uh-huh. <laughs> so get a camera and go follow Linkara <laughs> at a convention. <laughs> <laughs> Stalking with Linkara. <laughs> I had a huge entourage at MAGFest that would just, like, follow us around and, like, want to talk to us and ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> now, <clears throat> which of your videos are you most proud of? Uh, there are a couple of videos that I just feel really good about that I thought were just hilarious. Bimbos in Time is one. Though Bimbos in Time is also the one I would re-record if I could, uh, which, I, which, I, of course, I can. It's just no time. Uh, it's the fact that that one, I was sick when I filmed it, so I feel it, it doesn't have quite the same punch it would have. Uh, also, my review of Amazing Fantasy number 15, the first Spider-Man one, I think that's actually my funniest episode. I think all the jokes for that one work mm-hmm. and just are, are gut-bustingly hilarious, but <laughs> who knows what the people think, why they do not agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> Good ape, heaven. <laughs> uh... You might have actually answered this next question, but I'll ask it anyways. If you were go if you were go back and fix up one of your old videos, which one would that be, and what changes would you make? Actually, a lot of actually, in addition to the bimbos in time, one re-recording it, so I do it when I'm not sick. In addition 
to that. Uh, a lot of my earlier reviews were filmed very differently, and uh, and they were recorded. I, like, I did them in separate chunks. These days, I record everything just me on the couch or the futon. Uh, but but the earlier reviews, I do all the live action segments, and then I record the voiceover later by speaking directly into the camera. And I would probably re-record those, give them more energy, uh, give them just you know more. Peppy kind of kind of feel to them. Also, I was when I, my earliest reviews I recorded, I uh, edited it in uh, Windows Movie Maker. And these days I use better software, so I'd like to you know fix you know, text you can't see or or more panel diversity and more movement. Just just also sorts of stuff that I would like to do if I had been using the same stuff and had the same amount of experience that I do now. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Now, uh, there are a lot of people, including myself, who watch you and the Nostalgia Critic and want to be just like you guys, so that one day we could be on the site, without ripping you guys off, of course. What tips can you give to us to help us improve our shows? Uh, uh, there's so many. Uh, actually, the, the one recommendation I'd like to do is uh, send people, uh, since, you know, I'm lazy, I'd like to send people off to YouTube, and uh, if you look online at, at uh, panels for Daishokan, just do a search for, like, Daishokan, how to be an internet reviewer, because Doug and I actually did a panel where we answered questions about how to be an internet reviewer, mm-hmm. and how to try to gain more followers, how to uh, get how to improve your own stuff, what kind of tech you should use. Uh, and, of course, be patient, especially when it comes to the website. It, we were, we're already pretty damn full. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to want to split. And, you know, and opportunities will arise. And even if you're not popular now, to stick with it, even if it's just as a hobby. It's fun as long as you enjoy it. Just, just as long as you enjoy it, keep doing it. It should always be something fun for you. Yeah. It should never exactly. be a chore. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay, these next questions, these set of questions are by a form goer as Setzer Trancer and Jared, would you start them off? I shall. Question number one from Mr. Setzer Trancer. Have you ever read a comic book? <laughs> I had this guy on Facebook. Of course he does. <laughs> I'm not sure how to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Do I go sarcastic? Do I go, like, like funny? I think the way I... No, I've never read a comic book. What are those? <laughs> <laughs> I was... I was <laughs> you were going to come on and well, well, <laughs> The second question is, how do you never creatively burn out with the huge amount of content you produce? See, compare, see, actually, compared to some of the other producers, I actually produce fairly low amount of content. I mean, you look at the, the cinema snob, he, he sometimes produces, like, three videos a week, same thing as Doug. Mm-hmm. I do a weekly show and then occasionally a vlog or a history of Power Rangers or just the like, but creatively, the re- the way I don't burn out is that I just keep trying to find new things to to be interesting about. And that's the great thing about the, my show and ha- actually having to review crappy comic books because there's always something bat crap insane, just something totally stupid. There's always there's whole new levels of stupid that you haven't even discovered yet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, forbid, I you, have your, you have your standard Liefeld kind of stupid, but then you have stuff like Cry for Justice, which is just offensive. Mm-hmm. Then you have Bimbo's in Time, which is totally unfunny. You have Silent Hill, which Silent Hill comics, which are completely incomprehensible. <laughs> just so many layers of stupid, so many <laughs> whole new ways for it to suck. <laughs> the most, the ones I have the most fun with though, though, are the ones that are for kids. You know, like 80s kind of stuff that are based off of, like, TV shows. Chuck Norris, Karate Commando, James Bond Jr. Those ones are totally stupid, but they provide so much material. I enjoy doing those <laughs> yeah. so much because I love ones that give me stuff to work with. Yeah. Silver Age is like that, too. Silver Age always has plenty of stuff you can make fun of. Awesome. Um, 
who is your personal favourite reviewer on that guy with the glasses, uh, blistered thumbs, and the forums? If you have one on the forums. Me. Me. <laughs> I'm my own favorite. I'm my own favorite reviewer. <laughs> good choice. There's too many good ones. It's hard. It, it's difficult to actually pick someone out because everyone is talented in their own ways, and I like mm-hmm. to watch them in different kind of moods. Sometimes I'll just us marathon a whole bunch of nostalgia critics because it's good background noise. Sometimes I just like to sit down and watch Spoonie like making fun of a bad F and V game. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll feel something like something from a from the nostalgic woman's perspective, and I'll and I'll watch Nostalgia Chick with yeah. her very insightful commentary. And uh, sometimes sometimes I'll feel like uh, just you know learning what's new in the world of anime. I'll watch Mars Girl. Just you know. Every person has different strengths and different weaknesses. Oh, I like to watch Nash's old Doctor Who reviews, even though I disagree with him on one or two points. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a question I'm actually really interested in learning, too. Um, how long do you think it took for that I am a man to finally get old? It hasn't. <laughs> it hasn't. It hasn't gotten old because the great thing about the 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 thing about running jokes is you, there are two things you have to remember when you have a recurring gag. First, don't do it every episode. Don't do it. Uh, don't do it all the time. If you actually look at the amount of episodes that I've done, I am a man in. I think it's no more than six or seven over like a span of two or three years. Mm-hmm. And even then, I find and, and the second thing is you have to find a new spin or new twist on it. So the great thing about the I Am A Man punch is that I can always punch the side of the screen and then pull out something entirely new, Mm -hmm. something, like, completely random. Like, the last one we did, uh, I pulled out out Liz. Liz just suddenly just pulled out from the nether space. (laughs) (laughs) I pulled out Freddy Krueger's glove. I pulled out a digivice. I pulled out uh, a little statue I've got of a dog, of a a bunny. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Do you play? Oh, I, I, also, I make it. I make it a point to limit myself. I never do. I am a man more than once a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did hear that at Daishokan when you said that. Hmm. Um, oh, the next question is: Do you play drugs, Dungeons and Dragons? I do right now. I, sp- I play with uh, Spoonie's group and occasionally Skitch's group. Mm. All right. If so, what class do you play and why? Uh, I play a paladin, a human paladin, uh, in a Spoonies group because I just enjoy... I like playing as a human just because, you know, I, if I'm supposed to be role-playing as the character, I want to put myself into the mindset of the character and, you know, in, uh, live vicariously through it. Uh, and I like paladins because I'm religious... And I like the idea of a religious warrior. And religious warriors get a bad rap because most of them are, well, assholes or dicks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But there can be good guys who, who do things for religious reasons. Mm-hmm. So I like that. And, of course, I like Diablo 2 has really good work with their paladins. They have, they have the best attack ever, Zeal, where you just, like, it's basically being able to hit multiple times in a single shot. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I, that's what I do for Spoonies Group on uh, Skitch's Group. Uh, we started playing with him back at MAGFest because he decided to do uh, Tomb of Horrors, mm-hmm. which for Dungeons and Dragons aficionados, who are who, though people who don't know that, is basically a death trap the, the map. Basically uh, just the most deadly, m- most unfair uh, uh, <laughs> dungeon ever to go, go through. <laughs> for that, we have the Warforge Knight. And Warforge is kind of like this, uh, I like to say he's a robot, but he's more like a, he's closer to probably to a golem. <laughs> and there I play as Neutro. <laughs> <laughs> I have to deal with the puny humans around me and the, all, with their stupid flesh, because I, as a Warforge, am more like a mighty robot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ah, excuse me. Excuse the giggles. Uh, Have there been any fans that get too excited when they see you? Excluding us, of course. Yes, please. (laughs) Not very often. Most of the time, 
my fans are actually pretty civil, all things considered. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me. Uh, the worst they ever got was uh, was the was the fan who showed up at my door once, wanted to donate <laughs> money to me, oh my God. which is why I don't hand out ads anymore at the PO box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That is frightening. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if they turn up with a basket of muffins, that would be even more frightening. <laughs> I did baking! <laughs> I put a special ingredient in the pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, compared to, like, some of Spoonie's fans or Brad's fans who, like, absolutely hate any time he does something, they do something different or they cross over somebody, my fans are actually pretty nice and pretty civil. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, <laughs> occasionally you'll get a, I'll get a troll like like the guy who said who hates me because I don't because I had the audacity to insult Frank Miller. <laughs> I saw that. I... <laughs> Frank Miller's a god. <laughs> yeah, that's where that the douchey bit comes from. <laughs> I love that bit. What I loved about that, yeah. here's, here's what happened. Uh, basically, someone commented on, on like, a video right after the, my reviews of The Dark Knight Strikes Again. Excuse me. And, uh, and basically, they went on the, off in this tirade about how I'm such a prima donna, and, you know, everyone just, you just assume all your opinions are fact, and you know what? The Bee Gees can pull that off. The Bee Gees have been around forever, and they, they have the right to be prima donna. You, you're never going to be like the Bee Gees, the car. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's my absolute favorite fan moment. I, I just I like erupted on a twi on the Twitter in tears. I'll never be like the Bee Gees. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder. These <laughs> <laughs> uh, aren't one-hit wonders. They're awesome. <laughs> I know. I love the Bee Gees. As well, you should. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is excellent. Now, <laughs> the next question is: How often do you get recognized in public in normal clothing? Not very often. Uh, occasionally, I'll do so if I at, at like my comic book shop. But not all the time. You'd think, oh. But mostly, mostly because I'm not wearing the hat, and the hat is the identifying symbol of me. Oh. Yeah. All right, the next question is by Ozzy on the forums, and he asks, have you ever thought of reviewing any Chaos comics? Uh... Trying to think, what were Chaos Comics? Were they were they the ones who did uh, uh, Evil Ernie? I don't know. The thing with any comic book review and what I choose to review, basically, it comes down to if I if I see it and I think it might make something interesting. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So so if, if people wonder why I haven't reviewed like a Dark Horse comic. I haven't come across a particular Dark Horse comic that I feel that I can review. Mm -hmm. I just got the facts. Um, yes, Link Cara, they were a part of KS Comics Evil Learning. Ah, okay. There you go. I did Lady Death, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, the next question for you, Link Cara, is uh, by the forum reviewer E350. And he asks, mm -hmm. are you planning on reviewing the SpongeBob comic that's coming out? Please excuse me while I vomit over here, because I hate fucking Spongebob. Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Christ. You never know, it might just be so completely awful and horrible that, you know, it's, uh, it's worthy of it. But really, there's not much to say about Spongebob that hasn't already been said. He sucks. I don't watch the show, I don't know what about the show to care. <laughs> It's always a possibility. Oh, I might like run across it at some point and think to myself, "Oh my God, I must <laughs> review this. I must take this and rip it apart, shreds on my show." But I have it no worked for Ewoks. Worked for Ewoks. 
<laughs> oh exactly. my goodness. <laughs> now, the next question is from the it's from the cartoon hero and he asks, "Why on earth would you have two count them two copies of Shaq Fu?" I mean, I could understand having one, but out of morbid curiosity or otherwise, but why two unless one was broken? <laughs> okay. The reason why I have two copies of Shaq Fu, there is a, uh, a gaming store uh, uh, in, in a mall near where I live, and I saw two copies of Shaq Fu there. And I recalled that there was a website dedicated to finding all copies of Shaq Fu, and either, I can't remember, either preserving them or destroying them. I can't remember. <laughs> and so I figured, well, I will help out in this task and acquire them. Because <laughs> <laughs> they okay. were cheap. They were like, like four bucks each. <laughs> and then I just never got around to do anything with it. <laughs> <laughs> but it made for a good bag in the uh, 90s Kid review. Yeah. <laughs> like, takes out the copy of that's Shaq Fu and puts in the C task force. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's when all the buzz came about when everyone was like, oh, oh my god, Shaq Fu, two copies. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Madness. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> These next set of questions is asked by Isaac232, also known as the media hunter on the forums. His first question mm -hmm. is... <clears throat> What do you think of the whole DC Universe Online deal and how it, it's going to have its own countdown style of comic series? Like, if it becomes canon to... Do you think the whole concept of, of created superheroes is a good thing or bad thing? And how it will affect the current hero, heroes? That's a long question. <laughs> it will have zero impact on the DC Universe as a whole. Just, just trust me on this. It, it's, it's just a game... And I haven't I haven't played it, and I have zero interest in it. And Lord Cat and uh, both Lord Cat and now Yahtzee for zero punctuation have said the game is awful. Mm -hmm. So I probably won't be checking it out anytime soon. But uh, I sincerely doubt that the uh, that the tie-in comics of the game will actually have any real impact on the DC universe as a whole because they they creatively plan things out pretty far ahead. And then trying to incorporate elements of the game in, it would probably be too difficult for them to continually keep up. Plus, the sheer total tonnage of heroes introduced in the game uh, that, p that players can play as, they, they never try to incorporate all of that. Okay. Um, now that, with the above question in mind, would you ever consider doing the comics when it finishes its run? You probably already answered that, but hmm. here you go. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the game tie-in comics? Uh-huh. It's possible. I haven't heard anything bad about it, because I don't think anyone's buying it, but I could always... It's, it's possible I could review it in the future, but currently I have no plans. Here we go. <laughs> Alrighty, then. <laughs> Alrighty, then. Alrighty, oh, then. Now, in regard to the DC Universe Online... What kind of hero slash villain would you make if you wanted to? Uh, I would probably make a telekinetic kid. Because I like telekinetics. Telekinetics has, has so much range and possibilities for superpowers. But of course, never no one ever takes full advantage of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> all right. Next question is, are you and Iron Liz engaged at all? Or are you just really good friends? After all, we definitely see her a lot in your own house, especially doing the children's card games you play. She is my girlfriend, and we live together, but we are not currently engaged. Mm. Okay. Aww. That's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Hee <laughs> hee. You're welcome. <laughs> We kind of segued into East Ventura, Jim Carrey, and oh, how cute face! <clears throat> or I just like rambling. Uh, <laughs> now, since you seem to play the Pokemon insert color gem here version series, if you were to get black or white, which would you get? Also, would you mind handing out your friend code for maybe a battle sometime? <laughs> well, here's the thing. 
I am planning on getting Pokemon White whenever it comes out. I haven't been really following it. But uh, uh, as for giving out my friend code, I'd love to. The problem is I have no idea how the hell I do any of the wireless stuff with my DS. I bought my DS used. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> and I have I've never been able to get the wireless in this thing to work properly. Ow, go on YouTube. They have videos for everything. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> True. I should probably I should probably do that, but <laughs> I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I pointed something out like Kara missed. Score! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> you know what really pisses me off about the yeah. DS stuff, though. Mm -hmm. I have a classic mm -hmm. DS. I have the big brick DS. Oh. And they don't make any peripheral products for the for the old for the brick DS anymore. I can't find a replacement stylus because they don't because they're all for the DS Lite and the DSi, and those styluses won't fit into the back of this thing. You get. They, they sell loads on, on eBay, like if you get them shipped from the UK, there's hundreds over here. Absolutely hundreds. I know, I should just do that, but it, it's just the principle of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it, it's broke! <laughs> <laughs> just makes me angry, damn it. This thing is a perfectly functional DS, it works, why the hell don't you still make products for it? Oh no, we have to make our little camera DS's and make all the accessories to that. See, that's how they hook you in. It's hell. I get small you enough to buy the new one with all the little tiny gadgets to hook it. <laughs> I'm the only person alive who only uses their phone for like calling people and maybe doing a little bit of texting. No, I, I do that too. I do it sometimes. My phone exists as a phone. I just want to call people. <laughs> You're not one of those people who want a phone slash MP3 slash camera slash videograph slash thermometer. I have an MP3 player. It works just fine. I don't need a yeah. device that had, has all these things. I don't care about functionality. It's not what it's designed to be. <laughs> Phone calls people, MP3 player listens to MP3s, and laptop accesses internet. Exactly. Just on a side note, what the hell kind of phone are you using if it's got a thermometer on it? And, and where do you stick it? <laughs> well, you see, Susie, in America, we're greedy, so... Ah, well... We try putting as many things together as possible. I'd just like to know where, where you would put it. <laughs> what oh, sort of temperature would it be? So <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> anyway, I can think of a few places to tell the big on my desk where to put it because okay. I have one side for editing and the other side for doing everything else. <laughs> anyway, segue. Completely off track. <laughs> Can't wait to hear that one. All right, now on to another aww question. Which would uh, you prefer, puppies or kittens? Kittens. Oh. Kitties are cute. <laughs> <laughs> that will be kitty, 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 kitty. That will be implanted in my brain when Kara going kitty. <laughs> this just in, when Kara officially declares kitties are cute. <laughs> Everyone in America quickly buys a kitten. <laughs> I called it Lakara Jr. Wow, this time it sucks. <laughs> he may not be the Bee Gees, but damn, these kittens are cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, okay. Let's see if I can do this while screwing up a name. <clears throat> Since you're playing... <laughs> I see the name. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, ah, it's like in the innuendo. <clears throat> Since you're playing with Stan's work, what do you think of the involvement in the manga series Ultimo, in which he and Hiroyaki Taki wrote? <laughs> I haven't read any of Ultimo, and I don't really have all that much interest in it, so I'm not the best person to ask. Though I think that uh, Mars Girl has been following Ultimo, so you might want to ask, if you've, if you've interviewed her, ask her about it. Ah, 
Oh, well, we just interviewed her and we forgot to ask her that. Oh, oh, oh. darn. No! Oh. <laughs> Can you get her for us quickly? Just, no. <laughs> just a segue in? <laughs> Marsh girl, one last no. thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> damn. Don't you leave me alone? <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, got another set of questions by the forum review, re, re, reviewer. I can't speak now. Uh, <laughs> movie fan twelve. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the first question, uh, Linkara, who is your favorite villain on the top, the fourth wall, and why? Say it one more time. Okay, though, uh, Linkara, who is your favorite villain on the top of the fourth wall, and why? Uh, ooh, hard to say exactly, because I, I like all my villains, uh, but they all have, have parts to them which are very frustrating to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Link Saint, with Link Sano, it's the voice, that, that's the frustrating thing about him. Mm -hmm. Vice, the costume is very, is not all that comfortable, and Mechakara... Editing around the fact that there are two of me on screen at once is not fun. No. <laughs> it's fun and when there are two. I have to like, film all the stuff from correct angles, and I have to make sure everything, you know, matches up well. Mm-hmm. But, uh, maybe... Maybe if I really had to pick one. Well, maybe Mechakara. Because he was the mm. first, and technically the best <laughs> there's just so much energy to that so much excitement around it mm -hmm. he's a legendary character <laughs> <laughs> yes nice reference <laughs> oh yeah no I should have added than no. legend wait for it dairy da -dun. <laughs> Now, do you think a red female Power Ranger would be cool or not? Technically, there already has been one. Oh, really? Aha! And I, I think it's in Shinkenger, and I think that that's going to be a plot point for later on in uh, Samurai. I need to look that up, though. Ah. There you go. <laughs> ah, we learned something new. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, this is the quote. This next question I really want to know. <clears throat> are you are there any bad or strange Disney comics that you would review? Uh I don't I'm not aware of any, but like I say, it's always a possibility that that any number of things I'd review I just haven't run into them yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look. Um <clears throat> excuse me. Now the last question by Movie Fan Twelve. If you ever became super famous beyond the web, would you want someone to make a Linkara action figure, Magic Gun included, or have Lego make an atop the fourth wall Lego set, eventually leading to Lego atop the wall, atop the fourth wall, the video game, where you could play as Lego Linkara or Lego 90s Kid and any other character? I would definitely go for Lego Linkara, partly because <laughs> I love Legos. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, wish I, had, I wish I had space in my apartment to actually build a new build a new Lego base. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy my but having a football Lego Lego me would be awesome, <laughs> and uh, having a Lego game around the top of the fourth wall would be equally awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it now. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to bring it out. <laughs> Lego, if you're listening to this, make a fucking Lego atop the fourth wall. <laughs> We're a board game. Yes. Roll the dice, pick up a card. You are a man. Move forward. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my. Now, on to two questions by Mr. E. Vision on the forums. Was it ironic that you and... Doug, both did Care Bear-related media in the span of seven days. It was completely coincidental. And that seemed to be the case with me. I always, by providence, keep striking upon things that are happening at the same time. For example, the uh, Wolverine Adamantium Rage re review came 
came out roughly around the same time as Wolverine Origins. We did the Care Bears review within a span of seven days of each other. Uh, there was another one, I think. I, 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 yeah, I did the uh, I did uh, Strange Adventures mm-hmm. uh, about robots about, around the same time Terminator Salvation was coming out. And as it happens, uh, the review that's coming out on Monday, the Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, and Brain Drain, mm-hmm. just happens to feature the Fantastic Four, who are prominent in the uh, in news today because Johnny Storm has died. Oh, hmm. interesting. The not the know that. It just keeps happening completely by coincidence. Or does it? That's lucky, I guess. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, also, are you thinking about a possible Apollo Z Hacks review of verse? Uh, <laughs> restate the question. Yeah, hold on. <clears throat> also, are you thinking about a possible crossover with Apollo Z Hacks review of verse? I would love to do a crossover with with the review of saga. I don't know how we would do it, considering just how, just because we don't live anywhere close to each other. But I mentioned it to Lupa, who's mentioned it to him, apparently, that I would love to get in on that, because the review of her saga is awesome. <laughs> if, you, if, you like, if you guys like this, the fact that I have storyline in my reviews, anyone out there, <laughs> uh, you will love, love the review of her saga, which actually turns the concept on its head, the, the reviews are the thing that intrude on the story. And they're funny and entertaining and just awesome. It's genius. It's brilliant. They're really mind-blowing, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's completely different. Yes, I want to get in on, I want to get in on that action. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, like our, the next set of questions are by another fellow forum reviewer who's excellent for our questions, is Movie Brat. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the first question, what's your worst nightmare Freddy Krueger would exploit to kill you? Uh, hmm. I don't like tiny things. Anyone who's seen my uh, review, my uh, Let's Play of, a, of a Star Trek Elite Force, I hate tiny crawling things. Yeah. Not kitties, of course, but uh, just tiny <laughs> little... Things that can like attack you and stuff—they freak me the hell out. <laughs> I'm with you there. <laughs> I know the feeling. Okay. <laughs> Next question from <laughs> from Movie Brat: What's your opinion on Highlanders and its sequels? I haven't. I, believe it or not, I've never actually seen Highlander or any of the movies. Oh. Okay. Awkward. <laughs> Very awkward. <laughs> Thanks, Brat. <laughs> okay, let's just move on to the next question then. <clears throat> What's your opinion on the upcoming American Godzilla being directed by Garth Edwards, a monster fame of directing? I haven't seen it, so I have no opinion on it. That's the thing. <laughs> People ask me for opinions on things that haven't come out yet. <laughs> I need to ha- actually see something in order to have an opinion on it. Otherwise, it's just reactions to, like, interviews and stuff. And even then, I didn't even know it was happening, and I don't care enough about it. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Brat movie brat. Down. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that question, movie brat. I don't know. It's, it's, it's not, it's not that any, dis- any disrespect towards movie brat, because he's on my forums, no, too. It's just that, uh, it's it's just that this, is common, this is a common thing with me. People... People ask me questions about things and ask me opinions on things that haven't been released yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to do that when a movie is not yet released and you have no idea about it. So, hmm. As people expect to... They think um, people will just expect you to have an opinion straight away. Even if you've just seen a trailer, just think, what do you think about it? Looks good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I must um, know. <laughs> So I can sleep at night. And the assumption that I am, like, into every single thing rela- tangentially related to the comic books. Yeah. I'm not that big into comic book movies. In fact, I'm not a big moviegoer or game player overall. 
I play like DS games and I play like Genesis games. I don't follow a lot of this stuff because I don't care. I care about the comics, just the comics. <laughs> the comics are good, great stories, ongoing stories, ongoing characters. That is what I'm all about. I don't care if there's going to be a Ghost Rider two. <laughs> Okay. I don't care about the Spider-Man reboot. I think it's stupid, but but whatever. <laughs> I'm with you there. Um, now this, you may have just cancelled out the next question, but what's your opinion on the Nightmare on Elm Street remake? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, I hated it. It was a jump scare every five flipping minutes. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't scary, and I know a slasher movie and all that, but still, it was not frightening. They didn't take advantage of the imaginative setting of a dream, uh, like so many of the previous Freddy movies had done. So we had a good actor for Freddy, but they didn't give him anything to work with. The script was horrible. <laughs> all right, my question. All right, it's not an opinion. What's your dream crossover? Any movie, TV show, comic, etc.? <laughs> I still want to see an actual Star Trek versus Star Wars comic, or special of any kind. Mm -hmm. The fact that they haven't done it still shocks me. <laughs> yeah. You would think that'd be on the top of the list for, like, every fan. Mm -hmm. hmm. Apparently not. Oh, well. No. <laughs> Anything... All right, uh, the next question. How'd you meet C.R.? Uh, I originally met CR on the forum, on, on I think the blogs, because he had done a uh, a drawing of a character for my webcomic, and I was so imp and I was so impressed by this, so I asked him to see if he'd be interested in uh, doing the artwork on Lightbringer, which is the webcomic, and he agreed, and it just went off from there, and I and he was interested in getting onto that guy with the glasses as well, so. Uh, Mashad told me to see what I can do to like help him out, out in any way, and then eventually he just got on the site. Unfortunately, he can't do my webcomic anymore because he's got a whole bunch of other stuff he needs to focus on, but it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, so how's Transformers Dark of the Moon shaping up for you so far? I'm sorry, I can't get past the whole they land on the moon to find, al to find alien spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I have but you know maybe the movie will be entertaining it it just annoys me because of because of all the whack job moon conspiracy theorists yeah yeah there's a lot well, at least he didn't say we didn't land on the moon because that would just be utterly <laughs> moronic but <laughs> the fact that we went there to, for aliens <laughs> forget about beating the Russians it was all about the aliens of course yeah, yeah. but we'll, we'll see we'll see how it goes Hopefully, fans will line up on Michael Bay on like part two. Uh, no, they shouldn't do that. Part two was oh. so stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some bright side. Megan Fox isn't there anymore. Oh yeah. <laughs> now, anyway. what are your favorite episodes of Star Trek: The Next Generation? Uh, there are a couple of really good episodes. Of course, Best of Both Worlds. Uh, the Defector. Great, great story, great music. And there's one in particular that I always forget the name of. Uh, it, it's the one with Nagilam. Uh, where Silence has Lease. If you wanted to do a Star Trek horror episode, that's how you do it. You, you're encased in this void. You can't get out. It's very odd. You get tra you transport over to a creepy mirror ship that, like, the laws of physics don't make any sense. That's cool stuff right there. Mm. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. Next is, a to next is a totally fanboy question. Uh, mm -hmm. Alright. Predator versus the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Who wins? But, no Megazords, no special weapons. Well, you have to define special special weapons then <laughs> considering the predator is all about his weapons crap yeah exactly well, well there's no specified special weapons but really in the end it comes down to uh which team it is uh you said mighty morphin right yeah mighty morphin yes. yep okay so i'd say they have an even bet predator would probably win through but they, i think they both have an equal shot at it okay 
here we are. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, Linkara, would you want any of your comics to be adapted into films? I don't think it would ever happen, but it would be neat. <laughs> Nice and short. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Next question. What was the inspiration behind Lord Vice? Uh, there were a couple of inspirations behind him. Uh, obviously, Lord Zed. But really, what I what I wanted out of Lord Zed was not just the Lord name, but I like the idea of a one-syllable name. It's easy to say. It's memorable. It's catchy. Vice. We, we, we spent like an hour just figuring out the name on that. Uh, I was with the prop lady and Will, uh, Will Wolfgram, who played Lord Vice in, the fight, in both of the fights. Uh, we just like sat down and hammered out names for a while until we came up with just the one syllable word, Vice. Mm -hmm. And Vice was good on its own, but I was like, there, it, needs to be, it needs to be chained. We, it has to have a Y there, because if we name him Lord Vice, and then Vice is in, you know, Virtues mm -hmm. and Vice, yeah. then it would imply that he was directly evil, except I don't want him to be evil. He's doing it for a reason. So by adding the Y, by making it poor literacy is cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is the second part of Attack of the Awesome interviews Linkara. And apparently Jared has disappeared on us. Well, not, not really. He couldn't make it. And we're going to finish up the questions, and we'll just go right into it. Oh, Yeah. All right, uh, where did I leave off? Oh, in the first... Let the questions commence. <laughs> thank you, good sir. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I shall start them. <clears throat> As we know in the first part, you're not a huge fan of Highlander, but this question talks about Highlander in some sorts. The question is, do you think David Tennant of Doctor Who fame should play Connor McCloud in the Highlander remake? Ooh, that would make too much sense. Uh, yes and no. The pr I mean, I'm not. I don't much care for remakes, but on the other hand, you actually get a Scottish guy to play a Scottish character. Hmm. <laughs> uh, we've seen a little bit of him doing some sword fighting, but I don't know if he really has the uh, uh, the training mm -hmm. to pull off the role for uh, to do you know a sword fighter. But it could be done. They could train him. Mm -hmm. okay. As he's from my, my neck of the woods, I'd back him all the way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the last question here from the forum of your movie brat: uh, What would your what would be your concept for a Nightmare on Elm Street film? Mine? Ah, uh, I don't. Really, this is, these are the kind of things that I don't really give too much thought to. Uh, <laughs> If I was going to do a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, assuming it was a sequel and not like a remake, mm -hmm. uh, I'd play around some more with the Dream Warriors concept because that was my favorite of the movies. Uh, like maybe an organized force of kids who who can control their dreams, mm -hmm. uh, who are better able to fight off Freddy in the Dream World. Awesome. Sweet. <laughs> This uh, next set of questions is by a uh, form regular known as Detroit Mech Works. He gives us great, weird, and fascinating questions. And the first question is the hats. Any hats that you really want to wear that you haven't yet? <laughs> <laughs> I want more. I want more copies of my hat. The, the hat that I wear in the reviews. I only have the one hat. And I'm terrified of losing it, because <laughs> uh, because I because I haven't been able to find a hat that compares to it. I can't. Mm -hmm. uh, most hats available that I've found are ones that are like at Target and maybe a few hat stores, but none of them have the same kind of weight and feel as that as that hat. So it's several years old now, and I just know someday it's going to like either fall apart or or I'll lose it, and then I will be screwed. <laughs> Did you not work that into a storyline? Because that, that would be interesting to see. <laughs> Linkara, without the hat, what do we do? We're all doomed. 
Uh, now, what's your opinion on the Fireflies slash Serenity comics, or should we just let, just let this fandom die? <laughs> no, 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 this fandom should continue on, because I actually, I like Firefly, and I like Serenity, though killing off people unnecessarily, I'm never a fan of. Uh, I haven't read any of the comics, though, I really should, considering I, I do enjoy the Buffy and Angel continuation comics, though I'm really far behind on Angel. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't. So I should really get around reading those, and I think that they're probably they're probably pretty good because if they keep making them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the next question states: <clears throat> Drink of choice. If it's beer, beer of choice. If it's not, why not? <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Something about I'll repeat, beer. <laughs> I'll repeat it one more time. Drink of choice. If it's beer, beer of choice. If not, why not? Well, I don't drink beer, for one thing. I don't drink any alcohol. Uh, but my drink of choice, aside from grape G2 Gatorade, which is what I drink while I'm doing the reviews, uh, that would be Diet Sun Kiss Lemonade. Mm. Mm. Good stuff. <laughs> Good. Addicted to it. And... Um... Now, do you ever get the chance to read Tom Veitch's Dark Empire? And uh, do you feel that the creator of Bearded Jerk helped lead to the downfall of Star Wars? <laughs> ah, that makes far too much sense. <laughs> uh, but no, I have not read any of it. What I will tell you, though, just as a uh, hint for the future, is that I do plan this summer to, uh, actually, no, never mind, September, to look at the comic that uh, preceded Superman Earth's End, Commandi at Earth's End. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So probably more bearded idiot to come. Yep. <laughs> oh, and of course, the robot chicken pull. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. All right, this is, this is the last question from Detroit, and it's very interesting. <clears throat> you are handed a... Dungeons and Dragons book to create a character. That character will, will be mm-hmm. your new life as soon as you finish the character creation. Only problem is the character must be a female. What do you create and why? How very deep. <laughs> uh, hmm. Probably a sorceress of some kind, just because if I have that ability, hey, I'll 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 utilize magic to the fullest of my abilities to make my life better. Exactly. <laughs> There's always a demand for someone who can wield fireballs. <laughs> Many career adult. opportunities. Exactly. <laughs> and our next two questions are by a good friend of the the podcast Rubber Walrus and a good friend of mine. Uh, so his first question is... I just recently got back into comics comics for the first time in years. I've been reading through both Ultimates and Ultimate Superman, uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, what do you think are other great series and or trades that someone should pick up? Uh, i got to actually get together and put together a recommendations list on the blog so I, cause I keep getting this question too. Uh recommendations. I give recommendations all the time. I'm in the videos. 52, Secret Six, Birds of Prey, Kingdom Come, 52. Did I say 52? I'll say I didn't say 52. 52, Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, (laughs) Starman. (laughs) All right. That is that question answered. Recommendations all the time, and yet no one listens to them. (laughs) My job is so hard. All right, uh, these next set of questions is a personal friend of mine, uh, Greg, and uh, his first question he asked is, as I saw a cosplayer of you at the New York Comic Con last year, I'm curious if there's any chance of you attending the New York Comic Con this year. The only way I'll be able to attend the New York Comic Con is if they invite me. That goes for any convention. The thing is, I don't have a lot of time and money to go out to conventions just for my own enjoyment. Uh, if they're re- if they're really local, yeah, I can probably pull it off. But for something like New York, that that's hotel costs, airfare costs, get, convention itself costs. Really, you, you, they need to invite me. 
that's pretty much it. I need to actually be a guest. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, I can't take the time and money out to do it. No, oh, because that would be expensive. Yeah. Um, now, how many comics do you currently collect as of now? I hate the term collect because collect implies that I'm hoarding them to be used for 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 as as like a as like <laughs> a, a thing to sell later on. Yeah. No, I I currently buy and read uh, several titles. I I haven't actually sat down and counted them. I'd say close to a dozen or so titles. Wow. Of ongoing stuff. I mean. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Uh, who is your current favorite comic book writer? It changes on a day-to-day basis, but today it's Gail Simone. Mm. All right. <laughs> and uh, what's your current favorite comic book on the market right now? Uh, tie between Secret Six and Birds of Prey. Well, I would oh, just right fly it through these. <laughs> Sweet, baby, short and sweet. <laughs> uh, these next questions are mine that I came up with. Uh, the first one is, and I do this for all the interviews, what's your favorite song that you listen to all the time? Uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers theme song. <laughs> all righty then. Seriously. Even, even I get sick of certain songs sometimes, but mm-hmm. we're just looking at my list here. I'll listen to the, uh, to the Ron Jones music from Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good background music. Yeah. Uh, what else? Murray Gold's Doctor Who stuff. Oh yeah. I guess you'll just you know listen to a song over and over again just because. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do that with your theme tune just because it's addictive. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Absolutely. I was singing it in the car today, just going blink car. Uh, do 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 do. Oh, okay, random. <laughs> but it's just so good. <laughs> Alrighty, and uh, which contributor from Channel Awesome would you like to do a crossover review with uh, that you haven't done already? Uh, anyone that I really want to do a crossover with, I've pretty much already done in some capacity. Mm-hmm. And if I really wanted to do another crossover, I would just have to ask them. The thing that holds back a lot of crossovers is that we prefer to do them in person with the other person, and that shall be the case. And if it comes up, then you'll see that obviously we want to do a crossover of that kind. Mm -hmm. Just to add in an extra question there, what's your favorite crossover that you've done? Oh, the warrior ones are always so much fun. (laughs) Yeah, they were. They were brilliant. (laughs) There's so much costume switching, so much uh, much just little little jokes. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite crossovers as well. Mine's the Alone in the Dark review. That was just, just so fucking hysterical. Sorry to swear. Oh, yeah. I yeah, love oh, that yeah. one. That's a classic right there. Just, just the wee simple things like padding, padding, padding. Uh, <laughs> hey, look. That one was a Doug joke. I was the one who pointed out, I, I was the one who pointed out the, uh, the guns, you know, are obviously not hitting them. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least if it's supposed to be hitting them, then it's terrible editing. Yeah. Oh, it's just so funny. Just to add that in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where, where am I here? Oh, what kind of music do you listen to, if you could? I listen I listen to a little of everything, although, pro- though considerably less so rap, country, and hip-hop. Uh, the, only really ra- the only rap song that I really have, I ever listen to and actually enjoy is uh is a uh, damn it feels good to be a gangster because this is from Office Space. Oh, God. oh yeah, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. <laughs> but yeah, I listen to classical music. I listen to rock. I listen to a bit, bit of jazz. Just a little of everything. Yeah, that's fine. I do the same. Thank you. <laughs> that's why we're here because we're different. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Now, here's an interesting one. Um, if you can be any superhero, who would it be and why? Ooh, I'd be Superman, maybe. And why? Because Superman can do so much to help, <laughs> and I'd love to have, have the kind of power to help people. <laughs> good, good answer. Okie doke. <laughs> All right. 
I'm, I'm currently writing a screenplay for a video game movie, which is going to be Crazy Taxi the movie. Do you think it's a good idea? Would you think Crazy Taxi would be a great video game movie? Potentially. It has to, it has to have the Offspring soundtrack, soundtrack naturally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it will. Guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all depends on the characters, too. I mean, in Crazy Taxi can work, but... As a video game concept, it's fun just to play, but for a movie, it has to actually have, like, you know, characters and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, the four main, char- the four main characters is, uh, you, that you play is Axel, Gina, Gus, and B.D. Joe. And be, that, that's the four main characters, and mm-hmm. there's going to be additional villain characters to add in later because the plot will have villains in it and so forth. Mm. For some strange reason, I can picture 90s kid doing the narrator's voice in that, you know, the, hey, hey, there's another crazy taxi. <laughs> 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 Just for some, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some strange reason that popped into my head. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, now we come on to my questions, which, as I said, are really obscure, so... Should have wet your appetite, Linkara. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alrighty. <laughs> now, my first question. I love how unique the format of your show is, including the fact that you don't actually swear at any point in it. What is your opinion on reviewers or entertainers who believe that swearing constantly will get them viewers? I don't think there are many people who actually believe that. <laughs> uh, I, can think, I can think of maybe one or two, Ira Gamer. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for the most part, I think most reviewers are smart enough to know if they want to use swearing or not, if they want to use it in moderation, or if they want to just go off on a on a tirade. It all depends on what kind of person we're talking about here. The AVGN, when he swears, it's because it, this is the reaction of a gamer playing a difficult game. You actually hear them um, calling out F-bombs as they fail, and it pisses them off. Yeah. For... Doug, it works because uh, for Doug, the purpose of his swearing is that he's looking at it from an adult perspective, a co- somewhat immature person who never got over their childhood. Uh, mm-hmm. For Spoonie, it's just because it's fun for him. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, I'm a fan of the comic book panel format used in movies for scene transitions such as Hulk. Which comic books would you love made into movies using this, using this style, and which would make your skin crawl? I wouldn't like that because I don't <laughs> like that format at all. <laughs> if, if it's going to be a movie, you got to just let it be a movie. You can't try to create some weird hybrid of both con- of both formats. Mm-hmm. Just I mean, in, we get that, we get Battlefield Earth. That That's seriously the reason why they gave why... Uh, all, all the all the angles are at a Dutch angle. They say they wanted to make it look like a comic book, which I can think of maybe one or two direct examples when I think I think of comic book writers using artists using uh, Dutch angles. But whatever. But the point is, if it's if you're gonna make a movie, just let it be a movie. And I, and uh, when I saw Hulk, I mean, I we were talking about Ang Lee's Hulk. I did not like it all that much. No. Looked like a weird episode of Twenty Four. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true, on your mind. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> and uh, my next Your question. It's become a gamma, gamma radiated. What? <laughs> Jack Power has to solve this. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Got a little 24 as well. Uh, now, for my review show, Linkada, the Blockbuster Chick Reviews, I review, funnily enough, Blockbuster movies. What, in your opinion, is the worst block move, blockbuster movie you've ever laid eyes on? Ooh, define blockbuster in this case uh, for, by, by your own definition. Well, it's the you know the the big movies that make a lot of money that everybody seems to know that are really like Transformers or or things like that, Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, things like that. I know. I'm trying. I'm trying to think then, because some cause some horrible movies that I can think of have you know big budgets, but you know terrible, uh, but not exact, but might not qualify as like say a summer blockbuster kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, but considering that, how much you give? Man, maybe Transformers too. 
<laughs> See, and the thing is, it's not the desert scene for me. I, I actually really enjoyed the desert scene because it was action and it was robots fighting people, fighting things, which is all I wanted out of the Transformers <laughs> movies. Now, for me, it was the, the, the childish, immature humor, the racist robots, <laughs> just, just a whole bunch of just, uh, just all the stupid stuff that got in the way of the giant robot fighting and just was just stupid in general. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of movies, what are your thoughts of the upcoming reboot? of Spider-Man movies? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously don't care, because I'm not a big movie goer. I care about the comic books first, and I really don't think that it's going to make that much of an impact. No one's going to look at that stupid-ass costume that I've seen for the, for the reboot movies and say, yes, this should be Spider-Man's costume. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I don't even know why they need to reboot it in the first place. The three, mo- the first three movies are just fine. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't like Spider-Man three, you don't need to have you know you don't need a reboot now. Less than ten years after the last one, I mean, it all could actually made sense because because the first movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> True. This True. Spider-Man, not so much. No, <laughs> no, I still like those movies. Oh, Spider-Man. Um, where are we? Right, okay. <laughs> now, at the moment, Hollywood seems to be under the assumption that the public are after regurgitated CGI crap of our favorite childhood characters, such as the recent Yogi Bear movie. What do you make of this unusual phenomenon, and what do you think it will take to make these movies disappear? They'll never disappear as long as, as, long as they make money. Damn. <laughs> if they make even a modest sum, sum at the at the box office, they will they will keep making them because uh, because Hollywood is all about the money. It's all about being ch- it's all about trying to produce something cheap, and CGI these days is cheap. It's just so goddamn awful. <laughs> okay, here let me put it this way: uh, Red Letter Media's Plinkett reviews of Star Trek actually he summed it down. There's not there. Have, are not a lot of original ideas left in Hollywood, at least for them anyway. Mm-hmm. But there are certain th- uh, franchises that click with the public, that mm-hmm. are instantly recognizable. Something like Yogi Bear or Star Trek are just things that are in the popular consciousness, even if it's in the back of our minds, and as such, that we'll go see it just because of name marquee value. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's why they keep making them, because it's st- because the franchise still can pump some money out of it. Oh well, <laughs> more childhood memories to be mind raped. <laughs> yep. You just not watch them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. They're just friggin' everywhere. <laughs> hey, boo boo, let's get some in the baskets. Hey. Oh God. <laughs> I'm nightmares about those kind of films. <laughs> They're audible. Anyway. Anyways, the, the last question of Susie's is: Do you click? Do you collect British comic books? What is the best and worst British comic book you have read? I do not collect British comic books, so I don't have a best or worst. Oh. <laughs> sorry, I'm not. A, I'm not an England. <laughs> That's all right. Most of them suck anyway. <laughs> That's why I can't pronounce Gloucestershire. 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 <laughs> you had it there. <laughs> why do you add the extra letters to your words? Because that's the because that's in England and they're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you, say, you say we're the ones who are wrong for not using the letter U, but really we're more efficient with our letters. <laughs> no, they just to make uh, as long sounding places as possible. It's Gloucestershire <laughs> or other crap. I know why. Why does it have? I mean, if, if any, if no one had ever like you know. Oh, heard the English pronunciation. They'd make the same mistake I did. Think with Gloucestershire. <laughs> As I said, the English. Because you know why? Because when we have C's in words, we tend to think you pronounce them. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember the English suck. So there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in England, so I'm not going to say that because the English fans will get pissed at me. <laughs> Plus, the English game is not true. Eh. Oh, shit. Yeah. David Tennant's Scottish, so we get him. 
Okay. Um, here's another question from our, fo- our fellow podcast host, Chris, also known as Chris the Nerd. And he asks, what's your opinion on the graphic novels of Wanted and Kick-Ass? Never read Wanted, but I hear it sucked. And <laughs> never read never read the graphic novel version of Kick-Ass, which I also hear sucked. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> short and sweet. <laughs> just, short and sweet, indeed. Uh, I just thought of a question on the spot here. And uh, have you ever read... The DC Comics, The Losers, and have you seen the movie of it? I have not. I know of them, but I don't know. But I haven't actually like read them or seen the movie. Okay. I kept meaning to see uh, the Expendables and A Team that were out around the same time, and I just never got around to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, the last and final question to end this interview. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Pressure, Mike! Pressure! <laughs> no, not really. Uh, have we asked a lot of questions you have already covered in other podcast appearances? Not a lot, actually. The mo- the ones that I get the most often are are like, uh, how'd you get started? You know, general advice questions. Just very general questions are the ones I usually get on, on a lot of podcasts. But they usually, at least, you know... Give me some. Give me a lot of questions that are of a variety of subjects. So I enjoy all podcasts I'm on, even if sometimes they ask me like the obvious ones first. Mm-hmm. Is there a single person on earth who doesn't know how I got started? Now <laughs> everybody seems to know that question. I've got one final question for you, Linkada. Just one final one. Go ahead. What would '90s kid make of this podcast? This podcast was awesome, man! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, this has been Attack of the Awesome Interviews with the one and only Linkara. Woo! <laughs> I'm your host, Mike, and along with me was my fellow co-host, Susie. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll catch you later in the next interviews whatever that would be, and, uh, Peace bye. out. <laughs> Peace out, my homeboys. Welcome to the outtakes of the podcast. Now we can add Linkara. Do, 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 do. Fingers crossed. He was a man. Punch. Where's Birdie Head? Linkara. Do, 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 do. Uh. I've had that song stuck in my head Boys, for days. Boys, don't try. Listening to that all night, and I'm like, ah. Oh. Hello. Hello. Hey, Hello. Can you... Hey, can you hear me? We can. <laughs> oh, you sound clear. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> well, I can mark this off my bucket list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, the spiel will be for this interview is I'm going to introduce everybody, including you, and we'll just go straight into it. Okay, let me get my podcast voice ready. <clears throat> Hello. Rock on. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Was delay, <laughs> that was very dangerous. I took a drink of my juice there. <laughs> Don't splatter up the wall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that's how I was going to introduce myself. Dang it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should correct you, there is another comic book reviewer on that guy with the glasses, and that would be the uh, Last Angry Geek who does a show called Comic Book Issues. Sure. Yes. Forgot about that. But you're awesome! Sorry, you know, so it, 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 it cancels it out. Yeah, also, Sorry, yeah. But it, it just yeah. cancels it out. <laughs> yeah. Shit. <laughs> I do more research. Looper! Disc, disc. 
<laughs> Shame on me. And we leave uh, in <clears> charge. We'll leave a very special, we love the angry last video, the last comic book. Last week, angry and, uh, geek. <laughs> that is, not even yes. get his name right. Shame on me. There you go. <laughs> Oh, you just, man, you just keep the... keep digging the shame hole. <laughs> yeah. Deeper. Oh my God. Go. A more niche in the wall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> have your dreams? Have your dreams ever been haunted by Freddy Cougar? Freddy, I don't know any cougar. <laughs> Damn it. Oh yeah, that guy. He's a jerk. But once you like sit him down and. Give him a certain kind of comic book. He's an all right, dude. All right. Uh, no. B-Girl. Would you do her? B-Girl. <laughs> I don't know any B-Girl, I'm sorry to say. That's a, a blind hey, melon joke. Yelled at my God for some reason. Yeah, okay. Where's that womp 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 music? Wah, uh, wah, wah. Dude. Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty then. Okay, we're slipping oh, into Ace Ventura. <laughs> Moving the on. Ace Ventura is actually kind of a hidden gem if you if you actually go back and rewatch it. It's really funny. Oh, I love yeah. it. It's, it's one of my one favorite of films. This is so good. Not so much comedy. Mm hmm. Hmm. Unconscious, exactly as I planned. <laughs> 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 I think it's also the only sequel Jim will ever do, because he's already mm. done it. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Jim Carrey's an underrated actor. He's good at he's good at what he, he does, but you actually give him some dramatic roles. He can do some really good stuff with it. I love the Truman Show. That's my favorite Truman film. Show is that is my personal. favorite film. That's my yeah. favorite. That's I love it. Awesome film. Sorry, just going off on a as tangent. As long as he doesn't go to. One more thing. As long as he doesn't do something like the number 23, I'm sure his dramatic career will be okay. That the problem works. with the number 23 is that is that they never actually explain what the hell the significance of it is. Okay, so the number 23 yeah. keeps appearing. So freaking what? <laughs> and, like, the whole twist of the movie was, like, the biggest cliche people already had a feeling about. So when it comes out in the end, and, spoiler alert, that Jim Carrey wrote the entire book, you're like... I knew that already. Mm -hmm. Oh, but Jim oh, Carrey rules. The question. Truman Show rules. And back to the questions. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> this is it? Ace time. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Been there. That was a okay. yeah. Wow. And I'm back. Yay! Yeah. Hooray! <laughs> but I'll okay now. Yep, and we're still recording, so let's move on. Hey. Yes, let's just go to next second the questions. Uh, all right, from Movie Brat. Yes. Granted, we'll have another half hour. There we go. Right. Wonderful. <laughs> let's get this started. Well, before... Mr. Link Cara is... <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Uh, well, Mr. Link Cara is in the bathroom break. Yeah, ah. Link Cara took a little bathroom break, so he'll be well, back he is soon. returning. Thank God. We are just uh, assessing the questions. Mm hmm Because there are quite a few. Oh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Oh, yeah. Um, I think we okay, have about 30 questions left. Or so. Wonderful. Yay. We're all back. The Twilight Zone didn't engulf me all after right, all. <laughs> Uh, now, Susie, he says this is your all question right. that... <laughs> all, right, we got, all right, all right, we got 34 questions left. 34. I think we can do it. 34 questions left. We can do it. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's do this thing! All right. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we'll start up with Susie's question, which we... Susie Brad, number four. Oh, yes, thank you. Thanks, Jared. <laughs> Um, you're welcome. Crap. What happened? Uh, we lost them for a no! sec. <laughs> uh, no! I was in shock because of how crappy the film is. It's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so screw I this, I'm leaving. <laughs> 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 no, 
Wild Street, we make fuck shit, no. <laughs> ah, dropped again. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get him. <laughs> maybe he loves us. Maybe if we sing the theme song, he'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to a top the fourth wall, where bad comics burn. Linkar's gonna teach you all a lesson you must learn. It worked! Yay, it worked! Ha ha! I did it! I rule! <laughs> Susie was just singing the theme song to bring it back. And it worked! Oh god, I'm... Oh shit! Oh, oh. <laughs> Can you... Come on, we could do this. Link car do 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 Oh, yes, it's mine. Uh, there you go. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Yeah. So even if I get dropped again, then we'll know at least we got one question out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope you're happy, movie brat. <laughs> All right, moving on. Hey-o. Hey-o. hey -o. All righty then. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so where do we leave off? <laughs> Uh, uh, something about questions. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you think, uh, 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 uh alright. God knows what the last one was. <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> yeah, it's been way too long. Uh, uh, last question was about Lord Vice, and since I'm splitting the interview in two parts, I'll introduce this segment as the second part. And we gotta record a ending to the first part because the first part does not have an ending. So, uh, let's go. I'm totally unprepared right now, so <laughs> let me think of a ending to the first part first. Uh, okay, can I go to sleep now? <laughs> Um, I'll just like uh, the corner. <laughs> it's okay. Alright. Uh, this, <clears throat> this is the end of part one. Please stay tuned for part two of the Linkara interview coming soon to a computer near you. <clears throat> and then I'll say... What advice do you give aspiring internet reviewers? Any tips and pointers? Uh, I always try to direct people to the YouTube... Uh, to YouTube and a uh, panel that uh, Doug and I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't start screwing about. <laughs> not with, oh, not yeah. because of him, just because of the fucking Skype. <laughs> yep, Skype just every single time. Oh, and come on, Pamela. Come on, there's a good girl. Come on. Uh, can you tell I'm a dog walker for a living? <laughs> right, there we go. She's back up and running. All right. Uh, All right. So continue the last question about advice. I was just going to say we did a question about that last time. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was repeated twice, so I... Okay, so next question. Yeah, just, <laughs> just skip that question. You just go ding, and go. <clears throat> Robert, oh, ro 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 <laughs> Robert, well, <laughs> you're the same problem as I do. You kind of see it. <laughs> R W, as I'm going to call him, <laughs> asks. And who's your favorite contributor on Channel Awesome and Blister Thumbs that you personally love to watch? Me, of course. 
<laughs> I have no personal favorite because everybody has. Because like I, I think I, I think I said this earlier, didn't I? That uh, that uh, everyone has their strong points. There's always just something about each one of them that that I that I look to for something different. I look to Lupa for some of the more obscure bad movies and just her own fast-paced commentary. Phelous does bad horror movies, and he's just so insightful and intelligent, and his parody sketches of the movies themselves turn out just beautifully and has so much great <laughs> meta humor. Spoonie is just fun all around, yeah. no matter what he's talking about. You just like to listen to the sound of his voice. <laughs> This is he goes off on a rant, on a ranting tangent. Uh, Doug, of course, is, all, is always great for just hearing the uh, nostalgic stuff of the past, mm -hmm. stuff that I remember seeing ads for or I actually physically saw. It's just good stuff. Everybody's good. I have no personal favorite. Okay. Yeah, I think you did answer that question before. I forgot. So, wah, wah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I have <laughs> lots of repeat questions this time around. <laughs> <laughs> I've got different ones. I can promise you that. I like no, the obscure uh, ones. <laughs> no, I got some good ones too. Uh, uh, oh, and the next uh, part question, part comment is: Doug, Did you and Doug dress up as zombies for some gaming event that was going on? Yes. I yeah, we dressed up as zombies because we were uh, providing live commentary over. I think. Uh, what's the game where you? I, I was trying to remember what the game was, but I couldn't think of it. I was it's either Left for Dead or Dead Rising. I can't remember. Which I can't. One. It's either or. I, I, I was there when you guys did that. The point. I'm yeah, whichever one that was, that's what we dressed it up for. We were doing live commentary. Mm -hmm. The reason like, why. You know, yeah. Almost like we were wrestling announcers. That kind of deal. <laughs> oh my God! He used the double chainsaw. That that's not gonna look pretty in the morning, people. <laughs> Uh, the reason I bring it up is uh, uh, Daisho Khan, they took pictures of you dressed up as zombies, and they posted it on Facebook. And I'm looking at the pictures, and I notice something in the background. And I look at it really closely, and I notice that I'm in the background of those pictures behind you and Doug. <laughs> so I totally photobombed you guys. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> you stole their thunder! <laughs> I was like, oops, I didn't see the photo bomb you got. I was just checking everything out. <laughs> Thinking of creating a rapper character who's basically like Zelda Scott. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you, you should. Oh, God, it would be funny. Oh, wow, that would be funny. Uh, Have you ever thought of having... Uh, Iron Liz do a, a 90s girl to go along with 90s kid. That would be funny to see. 90s chick. 90s chick. There's a, <laughs> a thought to consider. Just have a whole episode. Dude, dude. <laughs> yeah. Dude, 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 dude. <laughs> what does mine say? Dude, what does mine say? Sweet. What about mine? Dude, what does mine say? Sweet. Ah, so that's where that's from. Yeah, I, I've never seen uh, uh, Dude, Where's My Car, so I don't know. So I don't know that one. Yeah, so I kind of fooled you with that one. Oh, it's, it's stupid, but it's funny oh, it's stupid. A, oh, it's, it's a funny stoner flick. <laughs> My stoner being the main uh, word to you. The funniest stoner flick is uh, is Bill and Ted. Yeah, because yes. it's a stoner flick where they're not actually stoners. Yes, yeah, I I will agree with you 100 percent on that. That's one of my favorite films. I haven't seen that in years. They're just righteous dudes. Ex excellent dudes. Were they one of the inspirations for 90s kids? 90s kid even kids <laughs> a little bit but actually the more i think about it the more i realize that 90s kid is actually ed from good burger <laughs> <laughs> i just realized that yes <laughs> i know it came to, it came to me a, a, a few months ago where i realized that <laughs> welcome to good burger home of the good burger can't take your order order <laughs> dude oh, oh dude he's a dude he's a dude <laughs> We're all dudes. <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> I long for the day to see 80s Dan and 90s kids <laughs> together. 
Yes. We're thinking oh. about it. We're thinking about doing something with that for the uh, for the third anniversary. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> I'd like that a time displaced uh, 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 therapy session <laughs> for people who are from different decades and time periods and kind of jump from it. Oh, this is awesome, dude! You just blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta head out and get back to work on uh, these Kiss comics that I'm reviewing. Oh, sweet man. Well, thanks again for. Yeah. Coming back to us, Lewis. We very much appreciate it. Not a problem. Just happy to finish up the interview for you guys. Yeah. It's brilliant talking. Uh, and keep and up the good work. Have yourself a good day and send me the... Uh, sorry, so, go ahead. Sorry, I was just saying thanks for, thanks for coming on. And keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> keep on watching uh, and send me the links to this and I will post them up on the blog. Yes, I will. Sweet. Sweet. Peace out, sucker. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye. There. That was awesome. There we go. See, that wasn't didn't take that long. That was awesome.